at what precise moment does something lost become found? Is deck building and worker placement the new hot shiznit? I'm your host Benji and this is Lost Ruins of Arnak in 5 minutes or less. Following in the footsteps of many an explorer of note, there's a new landmark in town and its name is Arnak. Once home to a great civilization, it's time for you to find treasured artifacts, face down fearsome guardians and uncover whatever secrets this long since forgotten haven holds. So what comes first, the deck building or the worker placement? Well, the former facilitates the latter, and so here we see you starting with a bog standard deck of six cards that contain the as expected plethora of resources that allow you to buy shiny new cards. But there's also exploration symbols that will enable you during any of your actions to place one of two workers. And placing said worker is where the economy starts a rolling. You've got your basic slots available which can and may be blocked no matter what the player count and can be selected using pretty much every card in your hand. But the more you progress up the board, the greater the movement cost. Be it by ship or by plane, you'll need to upgrade your deck before you're able to get to the tippy top. It's as you do that you'll start to encounter the island's guardians, who spread fear and obstruct unfettered access to its spoils. But it's also those fear cards that represent the largely unusable jank that fills up your deck. And this all goes without mentioning the sidetrack that chronicles your research in the ruins. Your journey through which is also enabled by the resources from your hands. So why might you like it? Well, if you like deck building and a splash of the new, it really is quite a splendid way to incorporate movement into your deck. Not in the guise of the previously seen point to point movement, but here with straight up worker placement. The path you must forge to ramp extra resources and how you ultimately spend them has a great deal of nuance to it. And that devolves excellently into the choices you can make, be it focusing on worker placement or turning your attention to grabbing the more point centric cards from the marketplace, which start off light on artifacts that support movement and heavy on items that boost your economy and transitions throughout the game. And of course you've got the research track, all of which blend together nicely. And as I'm sure can be seen from these photographs, this is a beautifully produced game that almost perfectly encapsulates that sense of adventure. Laced with elements of the mysterious and the unknown, there is such a thing as wordless theme, in that it's just the artwork and just the vibe that a game is packaged with that conveys that real sense of immersion. But why might you not like it? Well, as I've already mentioned, the game is very well balanced, but the amount of available choices have two potential drawbacks. One is the ease within which you can engage analysis paralysis, and the other is that some choices exhaust your resources quicker than others, so downtime can fluctuate and become a bit disconcerting. And finally, a word on game length. You generally find a fixed game length or an end game that is triggered when certain conditions are met. Here we have the former, and it can certainly not be accused of outstaying its welcome. That being said, there are times playing this where you've only just about got to somewhere near where you want to be before the lights go out. What this all adds up to is an ambitious game that plays mechanical matchmaking and makes it work, all the while bringing the theme to boot. However, that's enough words and this video has ended. So at which point in the adventure do you think those explorers on the box wipe those silly grins off their faces?